Welcome back to the Art of Safe Scumming, everybody. Today we're going to be starting a new campaign guide for the man himself, the absolute bulldozer, destroyer of everything, Archaeon. Now we're going to be doing this on Legendary very hard, and keeping it all the same, so let's hop into it. Now, I've been through... This will be my 10th playthrough of Archaeon, uh, up to at least turn 20. We may go a little bit shorter than that here today, because there's some variability, but... I want to say that this is probably my favorite campaign in a long time, since probably rivaling the original Torox launch with his just absolutely broken movement. I love broken stuff. There's a bunch of different ways that you can run. You can go up this way, you can go down this way, you can go over here, or you can run over here. I think I've got the strongest strat that I've been able to find to date, and to do that, I could run through hours upon hours of filming, doing this, playing all this manually, but what it comes out to is I can fight this first battle and take zero casualties. But if we just go in and bump this down to easy, attach the hero, auto resolve, I would have taken probably 50 casualties on that first battle. Even on easy auto resolve, we took more than that. So, knowing having done all this manually, we're gonna skip the hours upon hours of filming that it would take to make this guide and r run it through relatively quickly so I can spend more time editing it for you guys. So, first battle over, take the favor. Whenever I have to fight a battle manually, I will go ahead and bump that difficulty back up to very hard. And you guys will see me do that. So, now that we've done that, go ahead and re recruit our first two. We're going to go into our skills here, and we're going to focus on in experience gain. Because this is going to get us up and running to very quick, powerful units. Same thing on our hero here. We're going to go for training. And then we're going to take this first one. Auto resolve again. Look at these numbers. The auto resolve, in my opinion, is still just too punishing to the point where you end up fighting so many battles. But regardless, we're gonna do this quickly. You can get a better result by even leaving it on very hard and and fighting the battles manually, but I gotta film this thing in a reasonable amount of time. Occupy and vassalize. Now here, we're gonna go ahead and focus on money. And then for the first couple of these fortresses, we're actually going to use the growth building. Later on, you won't need to build this. You can focus on other buildings. Our first technology, this guy, and then we're going to immediately take this uh, gift right here, the casualty replenishment rate, and it also increases the effectiveness of our marauders. We're gonna be getting a lot of marauders. Simultaneously, we're gonna go ahead and recruit a Lord. I'm gonna go with some kind of caster. So, I like fire mages. Missile resistance is good. We'll go ahead and go with this guy. Go ahead and up our skills for Archaon. And then this guy's, you know, whatever. That is the end of the first turn. Force March. Archaeon towards this settlement. This guy is going to recruit our only gifted unit in the Hell Cannon. He's also going to recruit anything we have here. We did not get lucky with anything there. That is almost the end of the second turn. We're going to go into diplomacy here, and we can go ahead and uh, take this trade agreement, straight to business, make a little bit of money off of it. Checking this guy for recruitable units. We got some units. We're gonna go ahead and march him just to the edge here. And hope that he can recruit some units next turn. Archeon is going to march in raid stance as far as he can towards that settlement. And if he can recruit anything, then he will. Still waiting on this to finish. Next turn, we're going to start out with this guy. Can he recruit anything? He can. 
recruit him, and then we're going to march him one turn in the direction of this settlement. And as you can see, next turn we'll be able to reach that settlement. He can recruit more stuff, but none of these, except for this one, are topped out. So we'll go ahead and get this one, because it's topped out. All the other ones have capacity to fill something in the next turn. Come over here. Archeon should now be in position to take out this settlement. Attack it. Again, we can auto-resolve this. And we're going to gift it to our vassal. You want vassals with Archeon as many as possible because it's going to increase our research rate. We're now going to take Archeon and we're going to force march him in the direction of this settlement. The thing is, we want to make sure that we don't do all of our movement initially because we want to be able to scout to see. Because sometimes there will be an army here. So there's nothing blocking us. So next turn... Hopefully, we should be able to reach that. Our technologies. We're going for corn. And the reason we're going for corn is we want to get to our gift of corn. And the reason we're doing that is if we look at our gifts, if we look at the gifts of corn, this guy right here gives us income 35%. From post battle loot, income from raising settlements 35%. This is going to stay active basically the entire campaign once we unlock it. This one that we unlocked a few turns ago is going to stay active till about turn 70, and you probably won't need it anymore. And then the next one that we're going to get here next turn is going to be the bulwark right here for the Shatterstone. Just enough movement to get into this settlement. And we're going to subjugate. Again, we want as many va vassals as possible because it increases our research rate. Now with Archeon, we're going to come down around this way and we're going to go after the Skaven. The reason we're going to come down here is because there's one, two Dark Fortresses. There's another Dark Fortress right around there. As though he's headed over this direction. Now back to our guy over here. We have some cash to be able to spend. And what we're looking for is any fast units. But we also need enough force up front to attack to draw their attention. So we'll go ahead and get... Can we get it all? Yeah, we can get it all. Don't worry about this. That'll fix itself. We have enough room. And it says a valiant defeat. So, as I said, we're going to go ahead, and since I had to fight this battle manually, we'll go ahead and bump it up to very hard battle difficulty. We're going to go into our gifts. Go ahead and get the Ruinous Bulwark for the Shatterstone. Destroy. And now we read a decisive defeat. But I don't think that's how that's going to go. So the strat looks like this. We're going to go ahead and take all of our fast units and separate them out. Hide them in the bushes here. We're going to take the rest of the army and stack it up right here. We're going to take the Hell Cannon, put it right over here, right next to the edge of the map. And depending on how things go with those towers, we may withdraw it. We don't want to get it killed, but we want it close enough to the edge of the map where it can shoot and damage our enemies, but be able to be quickly withdrawn. That should be good enough. All right. Our first Shatterstone we're going to use right here. So we're going to send all these guys right up in their face. And as soon as this is ready, Right there. 
Now what that's going to do is it's going to open this up. Bingo. So, tell them to get in. Simultaneously, we're going to take all of our hidden units and run them over here. We have 36 seconds now until the next Shatterstone is ready. We're going to blow a hole in that wall right there. Meanwhile, we're going to concentrate some damage potential over here, trying to get them to commit to a full fight. And it looks like we're going to make it to about right there. Now that we have taken our second Dark Fortress, we're going to go with money. We're not going to build the growth in this one because we want to go ahead and upgrade that right there. That'll get us access to this money faster. When we have the capacity to go ahead and build that one, we will. We're just going to go ahead and leave that for now because we're a little bit tight on cash. And then this guy should have the capacity to take this, but we forgot to, for the sake of time. We shall weave the fates. We lost our spawn, but you know, if you wanted to, you could fight this manually and not lose any of those troops that we just took losses on. And we're gonna subjugate, because we want as many vassals as possible. Go ahead and get his skills online, and then we're going to force march him in the direction of Kolek. Now, this one should be able to build our growth now. We're going to take these people out. We definitely do not want any non-aggression packs with basically anybody who is not our vassal at this point in time. The only exception to that is we're not going to go into Norska right away. So anybody in Norska, we can do any deals with we want. Particularly like Throt, any uh, Wintertooth. We can also do uh, Wolfric. Any of those guys we can go ahead and make treaties with because we're not going to touch them until probably turn 70. Check this guy. Does he have anything that's absolutely necessary? I would say no. Absolutely necessary would be like if we popped in here and we saw an aspiring champion or something like that, or say a dro dragon ogre. If we saw those, then we would pick them up, but we don't see any, so we're just going to go ahead and march right in. How is Archeon? So, what we're going to do here is check. Again, I would say nothing that's like absolutely essential there. We're going to force march him to here. Because this is a Skaven settlement. The idea is that next turn, when we go ahead and attribute this to our vassal, it's going to kick us out this direction towards this dark fortress. Check for diplomacy. Delectable. These guys want something. I may be a feast of pain. Accept it. Try okay, so we know that there's an army there after seeing that. So what that means is that we probably need to recruit some more units into Arcan's army. Moving right along. So we probably need to recruit some units into this army. And this is going to be a minor settlement. No. This is a minor settlement, but it won't be, it'll be a field battle. So we need field capacities. And so we're just going to ever so slightly move ourselves this way. Oh, it's a small army. We're going to be able to resolve this. Yeah.
gifted to our vassal. And then we're going to try to stay in our own territory so that we can reach this. We want to be able to replenish. We're going to move ourselves to right there. So we replenish, but then we can reach this next turn. Do we have anything that's pressing? You could argue for, at this stage, you could argue for these guys, but we're a little bit strapped on cash. So, we're just going to keep right on marching. And we can get them next turn if we want to. But see how we're in Dragon Ogre territory? Like, if that popped up, then we would absolutely need to get that. So, next turn, I don't think we can reach the the fortress. It should be right around this area. And we were gifted this guy. We're going to take him down, and we're going to have him meet up with this army. I would save your quest battles. I think that they're the... You can get away with a full stack of uh, support units plus a full stack of Chaos Warriors. I think that you're not really gaining that much by waiting for Chosen. So you can do it with a a stack of Chaos Warriors once these are upgradable uh, or you can uh, wait for Chosen, it's up to you but it's not going to be in this guide that's for sure so, check this close victory do we have anything that is um, not really we're going to auto resolve this one anyway uh, and it's going to wipe out one of their armies so, auto resolve And occupy. If you do stay. Money. And we're going to basically be able to recover this. Because we're going to, next turn, depending on whether they occupy this dark fortress or not, they will either have one settlement here, or two, which is one there and one there. Depending on what they do, will depend on how we move his army next turn, but for the time being, they aren't going to attack this with this plus whatever garrison we have obtained. We might need this, so we'll take it first. Get our replenishment rate. Okay, off. Okay, back to our other army. We're starting to get to the point where... Let's see if we can... Can't quite reach it. So, he's going to continue to go on that direction. Anything that we have for a... For a major settlement battle... Can be recruited next turn. Starting out Archeon situation first. Our guy gained a level, so we'll go ahead and uh, just allocate that. Now, if we look at diplomacy, we can go to Ferric and see that they have two. So what that means is that they occupied this settlement and now this one over here. What we're gonna do is recruit another Lord doesn't really matter what it is. Let's go ahead and just go with a Chaos. Yeah, we'll just go with a Chaos Lord. They took an army over here to occupy that last turn. So that means if we take Archeon over that direction, then unless they use the Underway, then we can catch them. So... Even if they ambush us with a full stack of whatever they can recruit at this point in time, we can beat them with this army. So we're just going to go ahead, force march our way over to this. The whole purpose of this guy being here is if they decide that they're going to move this guy over, then we have the capacity to recruit and defend this territory. They probably won't. They'll probably head this direction. 
don't really have anything that we want there. But let's go over to our other army. This one is going to take on this settlement. And this settlement is level 2, so this is the garrison they have here. And this. This should be a major settlement battle. However, I have seen it on more than one occasion not be. <laughs> which doesn't make any sense. So, we're going to be fighting whatever that is, plus... It looks like mostly Marauders with some Chaos uh, Warriors. So we, we're going to need some damage dealing potential here. Actually, no. If we look... These guys... We can join war against the... Heralds, get some more money. Had purchase these guys. Alright, that should fill us out enough to be able to beat this with relative ease. Wipe them out. Again, valiant defeat. Let's check our map. Sure enough, field battle. Which makes absolutely no sense. This is bugged. But let's go ahead and increase our battle difficulty. And go for it. Enforce Confederation. We now have Kolek. We were able to take the settlement without taking any damage to it. Now that we've forced that in confederation with Kolek, we have some movement left in our army. We're gonna go ahead and move it down this direction. We're gonna go after this right here. Have all of the stuff that we currently would want in that settlement. We can go ahead and upgrade this one. That was expected. So looking at this guy, we're going to raid stance. And we should be able to make it to there next turn. So, there we go. As far as our techs, steering branding iron, next turn we're going to get this. Moving over to Archeon. He is not going to have enough movement to make it there. So we're going to put him in in camp stance and move him the maximum distance because we want him to basically replenish. Ooh. We're going to go ahead and recruit that next turn. Now, let's talk about Boris. He declared war on us over the intern. He's going to continue to go up this way probably with his main army. There is this settlement here and then the... Um, Oh, he's already taken the Howling Citadel, which is right here. So he's probably going to come back and take this out or start coming into this area right here. If he comes for this one, this is the easiest place to take him. If he comes down this way, it deletes an extra turn from our strat. But ultimately, he's going to have to fight our vassals in this area while we finish up down here and get up that way. We're going to go to war with Grimgore. So we're just going to, for the time being, not mess with anything. Now, this army is not close enough to reinforce, so we can basically just take this. If we look at Flung, can't get any help there. And while it is a Pyrrhic victory, we could fight this manually, but we've got plenty of time to replenish after we take this. So we're only going to lose one horse master, or uh, horseman. So it's not really that big of a deal. And we're going to subjugate them, giving us yet another vassal. Force march over here. We're going to take this settlement out.
And with that, we're up to one, two, three, four, five dark fortresses. Stationary can't really go anywhere. We have to deal with this. Now, chances are they're going to attack this thinking that uh, they can take this garrison. But this guy is going to go ahead and recruit these extra. And that's probably going to cause these guys to wave off. They're probably just going to be like, yeah, no, we're not doing that. They'll retreat to here. Archeon will come around to assist. This guy will still sit here uh, awaiting an attack. Oh, they went for it. We have some new vassals. Let's see if we can get anything out of them. Unceasing. These to guys want to work. Rather be raiding. Fine. Tribal fury. These guys want to do some stuff. For a head I submit. And while we're here, we might as well go ahead and get Wintertooth. And we can, we're, we're not going to need uh, military access, but if we do this, then we might as well, because we're not going to be back here till turn 70 or so. All the rest of this, you could go for this one, depending on how comfortable you are with this. Ultimately, what's going to happen is we're going to come down here and start messing about with Grimgore. And to do that, we're going to have to come through this direction. And sometimes, depending on how you do it, you may come down here and take these guys out. For the sake of argument, we're just going to go ahead for this one and not deal with it. So we know that they're not going to attack us. So we're basically going to plan on bouncing through here, destroying these Grimgore lands, and then kind of going down this way. This time. Is there anything really good? No, it doesn't look like it. We're going to occupy it, because what we're going to do is next turn we're going to move up this way. They can't reach us. We're going to sell this to Flung in order to get them to join our war with uh, Grim Grimgore. Look at where this guy can force march to. Where can Ar Arcan get to? He can get to. He can both get to about right there. Force march. This guy to there. Transfer the units. Disband. Now, if we go over to this guy. I don't think that we can beat this army outright with what we have here. So instead, what we're going to do is go there, hide, and oftentimes you'll find that Flung will op occupy this. If you they are, then you can sell them this settlement for quite a bit of money. Or get them to join your war with Grimgore. We're going to have to fight this by ourselves. So Instead of just outright losing the settlement, we might as well get some money out of them. Well done. 
And that one. Skaven are running. Not gonna matter. We're going to uh, vassalize them anyway. Now, here's the situation that we've created here. Grimgor is being fairly aggressive in this campaign. You can see he's gonna start moving down in here and taking this stuff too. So, if he's not being quite this aggressive, then it's a better situation to be in, but the bottom line is this is what we're in. So, he's looking like he's gonna try to take that, so we're gonna have to raise another army there to defend that, because this one can't quite make it. So, I think what we do is we raise Kolek. And he's got some stuff that can help us here, but we're gonna need some more, uh, some more, some more cash. Let's go over here and go ahead and vassalize these guys. Again, we took some damage, but whatever. Subjugate them. Get some more cash, but now we're going to need to move this guy up here. So, Archeon is going to take his army up this way. And there's going to be a fair amount of battling around this settlement. We can't really afford to recruit anything into this army right now because we, we're going to need it in the other location. There's nothing to really get here anyway. So, this army can't reach here. Of course. Put Kolak in. Go ahead and get... It's not Grimgore himself, so it's no big deal. The safe play is going to be to move this guy here. Because what they'll probably do is besiege this for a turn. Uh, they may outright attack it. We'll, we'll see. Now, if this was on very hard battle difficulty, this would probably be a a listed as a valiant defeat. But we have a full garrison. We can go ahead and auto resolve this. Because it's on easy. We would have taken approximately the same amount of damage anyway. We're going to go ahead and force march Archeon up to here. He's going to basically relief this situation. Okay, we don't see any more of Grimgore's armies here. So we're gonna what we're gonna do is consolidate some troops. The reason we did that is we need to free up some space in our uh, finances here for defense of this position from these guys. You dare very well I move. It is corrupt. Alright, so let's look at this situation here. Kossars and crappy cavalry. So if we were to put this on very hard to fight it manually. Again, totally doable. I usually count for myself that I'll get two levels better than whatever the auto resolve says on very hard. So if this is Valiant Defeat, then it'll be a close victory. So if we go back and just put this here for the sake of argument, Says it'll be a her heroic victory, which is essentially a close victory that was supposed to be a defeat. So, auto resolve, and we're good. The aspiring champions really helped us out. I foresee. 
and we can totally run up and take them out after we do this. But if we look here, we saw that... Okay, we don't have quite enough movement. There is no way that with this army that this can touch us, even with Boris. Archeon is just too strong. Now we have a choice. We can either go for this. Or we can take out his main main buildings. I'm voting for main buildings. Yes. But what we're gonna do, just to make sure, is because he's usually in every campaign that I've played, Grimgore's usually down in this way, wreaking havoc, trying to get some more territory. So what we're gonna do with this sorcerer is we're going to run him down this way and see that there's just a small army there. So that means that the rest of their forces down there, we have the ability to go through here and take out his main settlements. In fact, there's gonna be nobody up here. So we might as well just go all the way. And then this guy can catch up later. We need a couple more troops here. It has corrupt. What? By the Eldritch I see. Now they will set. They're gonna outrun. Nope. Execution. And we're not going to go up this way. We're going to take this army. And you really have two choices. You can either disband the whole thing or try to get that aspiring champion up to uh, Archaeon. I'm just going to elect to... We shall weave the fates. Actually, no. We're going to take it and we're going to go up this way. We're going to take this settlement out next. And I think we have a mission here. This one is... Raid the Falling Region. Well, we're going to not get that. Tempest <laughs> Incarnate! And we're just occupying this to keep it from Grim Grimgore. We're gonna go out this way, blow up this, or occupy it. Maybe occupy it for selling selling it later. And then we're gonna come back and take out these lands. We're gonna leave this sorcerer here to basically tell us when they're coming up through and where they're coming. Moving. Which looks like right there. <laughs> He's going to be pissed. He's going to come up this way trying to take out our army, but he's can, he can never reach us. So it's going to be roughly two turns until he can reach our settlement there. So it would probably be in our best interest to raise another army in the area. 
All right, so now that we have gone through the lineage that we went through, we can go up and get our buff that we want. This one. So now every battle is going to yield us 35% more loot. Now, as far as taking out Boris, I don't want to come all the way back down here. <laughs> So, since we have this one here and they've already captured this, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just take this guy and we're going to march him through with the idea of taking him over there to take that out. Again, this is very situation dependent. There have been campaigns that I've gone through and I've never been declared war by these guys. So, this guy just happened to be there. What I would say is if you didn't do that, you should probably take Archeon down through there and blow this up. Because we're almost at the end of this guide, and the idea here is that we're going to try to take out Boris, and then we're going to march Archeon over this direction. Probably be recruiting out of that settlement. I'll move. Onward to destruction. The next technology we're going for is Rite of Ascension, because we want to get to Infernal March here. We're going to be strapped for cash, so what we're going to do is, again, it's going to take him some time to get to this, so we're not going to recruit anything this turn. Now I saw something interesting over the course of the intern. These guys, whenever you see these guys, they love chaos. So immediately you can extort. You can just go payments and just get yourself two grand. Sometimes you can get a second one. No. But you can also get them to potentially join your wars. They'll join this war. They'll join it for in exchange for paying you to join your war. Will they join? No, they won't. Join war against Urson? They'll join this war. It says they'll only do it for that, but... They'll totally do it for more than that. And if you want to keep on going, you can do this... and ask them for more money. But I think that's probably enough for now. So, March Arcan up to here. We're gonna go ahead and do this. This should be worth sacking. Yes. So we sacked it, and now we're gonna occupy it to take it from him so he can't use it against us. And then next turn, we're gonna walk back down this way. We're going to use this sorcerer to determine Get what they're down. doing. He still cannot reach that settlement. I think that he's probably going to go for this weak one here. What is thy will? What Eldritch I see? Now to force him to take on this settlement which I think he might be able to reach. We're going to raise one of our previously raised dudes. Yeah, this guy. And we're going to see what he can... We're just going to give him some units. Not a whole lot. And hopefully that will discourage him from coming up this way and trying to go after this. Which Kolek should be close to getting to next turn. He can force March there to reinforce it at least. So we're done with the 20 turn guide, but... As you can see, basically, this forced him to 
not want to go after this fortress. So if we take Kolek and force march him into this settlement, we can then attach our wizard. And now they've got the garrison that's there at Ice Prewer and Kolek's army to deal with. Is there anything good that we can get out of this? D doesn't really look like it. We can consolidate and get some ogres if we wanted to. We can bring this guy down to here, which is still out of reach. And he could be recruiting some units from this area if there was anything worth recruiting. And then Archeon up here is basically just going to take over this fortress. We're at the point with his army that we can start moving all these guys into Chaos Warriors. These guys can go up to this. Or one of them can, anyway. Let's see where we're going here. Destruction. This army is going to come into here, be able to take that over next turn. This one is going to probably win. Uh, maybe not. It's all Skaven slaves. But this vassal is going to take that one next. So, over the end turn, we stand to make significant gains. And you can see that we've consolidated a lot of territory. We're going to with these armies over here, finish off Grimgore, start taking on the ogres and moving down this way. Ultimately, what we want to do is there's a couple black fortresses or dark fortresses down on the coast of this river here. We're going to go ahead and take those. We want to try and stay out of Cathay as long as possible. Even after we go to war with them, we're going to try to just sit on their border after we start taking over this territory here, which is going to be our next objective after we start beating up on these ogres. The reason we want to stay out of Cathay is because they send caravans over. And with all of this ter territory occupied, we can see when those caravans are going to start coming through and start recruiting armies to take them out at fifteen dollars to $20,000 a pop. With Arkan's armies and these armies up here, we're going to stay out of Kislev and the Empire and Norska for the foreseeable future until we get to about turn 70, 80, something like that. And we're basically gonna play defense here. We'll probably go here, upgrade this, build a garrison there, things like that to basically keep them out of this region and also defend ourselves from these guys who are gonna come up through here. Take these lands if possible, whenever. But then Archeon, we're gonna take him and we're gonna march him all the way across these chaos wastes, all the way around, continuing all the way over until we get to Nagarond and take all that area right there. We're gonna vassalize who we can, as we can, and there's the opportunity to suck up vassals in the form of Sigvald and the Gore Queen while we're over here. So you can get a whole bunch of dark fortresses this way. You're gonna be flush with money and you can then, after you've taken all those, start moving south with Archeon into uh, the area of the Elves and start raising other armies up in this area, by which point these should be basically tier five settlements by the time you start your assault on, the, on Kislev and the Empire. And you're, again, basically just going to steamroll everyone. So I hope you guys enjoyed this guide. It was a lot of fun making it. If you got ideas for ones in the future, then please sound off in the comment section down below, and I'll see you in a future video here at the Art of Saves Coming.